If you only needed an audit trail for a handful of fields, this technique is easy to implement. Very easy, in fact. There's really no sense in designing a complete audit log system for every field if you only need two fields to be tracked. There's no point in doing that. Let's do something simple. So not only is this technique easy, but it's designed for small jobs. If you do happen to need to track more than, let's say, 10 or so fields, this technique is really going to clutter up Manage Database with a lot of fields, as you'll see. So let's go into Manage Database, and we'll make our tracking field. And I'm going to give it the same name as the field we're tracking. And we'll just put Mod after it, or Modify, just to follow this Stamp Modify and Account Modify uh, naming conventions. It's going to be a text field in this case, or actually I should say a timestamp field, I apologize. Hit create, and we're going to put in here into auto enter on the calculated value get current timestamp. There it is right there. Click OK. Now it's very important that we uncheck this option because otherwise it's only going to enter once into that field when it's empty. You'll see it'll happen here if we come in here. In fact, it's not even going to enter at all right now. You'll see. Let's put the field on the layout, though. We'll put it right next to our first name field. It looks like I put first name. Let's change that. Everybody makes mistakes, right? We'll say first name mod. That looks good change it to our name first mod which is right down here. There we go. Probably doesn't need to be that big. Go into browse mode. And you'll see what happens here if I take this out it doesn't update. If I put something in there it's not updating, right? That's because for a couple of reasons. One is we need to make sure that we have this option turned on. But even if we turn this option off it's still not going to work, right? I'm going to take it out, paste it in there, right? Nothing's going in there. That's because there's nothing to trigger it. What we need to do is link it to that field. And probably the easiest way to do that is with a case statement. I simply reference that field. It's either going to be true or false. I don't care which. Either case, it puts the current timestamp in there. So let's click OK. Click OK again, click OK. And this time, when I take that out or paste it in there, you'll see it puts that in there. And every time I change it, it should update. Well, it doesn't update right now. Let's see what the problem is. What I'll do is I just, I just, I did it so quickly it was the same time. So you can see how if I wait a little bit, change it, it's going to update for us. And it's only updating when I change that field, not when I change this one. Right, it doesn't update, so it's tracking just that field. So it's different than these record level. This is a field level modification. Now what happens if we come in here and do this? Go to that field. Check that back on. That's the default. You'll see that now at this point, it's no longer to operate because this has got data in it. If I take it out and then change it, it updates it, right? But it doesn't update it after that. It never updates after that. That's because you need this feature turned on. And hopefully that helps you to really understand it. This feature that we I turned off or turned back to the default, I want it to replace the existing value. So anytime this calculation gets triggered, which is triggered by name first, whether it's true or false, we don't care. It'll be one or the other, right? it's going to replace whatever's in there so it's going to overwrite it if i don't if i check it then it's not going to overwrite it so we want it unchecked here and that's how it's going to work best and we could do the same thing for name first and account so probably we should change this name name first stamp modify whoops yeah, i think i got it there i'll duplicate this one name first account modify we go, change that. That'll be a text field, so I'll change it there. And we essentially just come in and change the formula a little bit. We just refer, refer to the same field, but get account name. 
And we're really not going to be able to see it update here because I'm not going to log in and out with different accounts. I'd have to put security in there. But you get the idea. This will work here. And we can put that one in there. Go into layout mode. Now, normally what I would do is if I was implementing this kind of thing in a solution, you don't want people to get in there, right? You don't really need to be, make an editable field. And probably put it right there. In fact, I would, uh, let's undo that. I accidentally deleted more than I wanted. Put that right there. Double click on it. This is stamp modify. Good. I actually want the account modify there. There we go. And we go in here. And we change that field. Get it back to what it should be. You see it puts it in there, but if I do it again, it's going to keep putting admin over it. But normally, if I was going to implement this in a real solution, I wouldn't allow people access to these fields. Now, if they wanted to search it, I would come in, and I would simply click on these, go and show my inspector, and prevent them from entering in browse mode, but they could enter in find mode. Or I might go ahead and use uh, merge fields, but then I couldn't find them. It all depends on what you really want. We'll leave it as is right now. So we could do this for as many fields as we want. You can see how we have to add two fields for every field to see who did it and when they did it. Now I'm going to also come in here and make it a little bit more snazzy. So we're going to make our name. In fact, I'm just going to duplicate these two. This will be name last stamp and name last account modify. And I actually forgot to do something here. I want to show you something. There's a problem with it. So we're going to take off back to where we were back on the first name and we'll come back to the last name in a second. Now remember what's in here. Watch what happens if I take all the data out of here. Oops, it's gone, right? Simple fix for that, right? Just come into Manage Database, go into my options, uncheck do not evaluate if all reference fields are empty. Simple little check. Do that also for the count. Oops, wrong one. Tried to get the wrong checkbox there. There we go. And now we'll put it back in. I'm going to paste it in. Comes back in. Of course, that would have happened in another version. But now when I cut it, it still stays there. And, and you want that to happen. It's, it's really important to test your solutions to make sure you know what can cause them to fail. So we'll come back into our Manage Database. We'll look at this one. And we'll come in here and we'll change this to evaluate. Now the evaluate function is pretty cool. What it does is allows you to evaluate the contents of a field. Let's just go ahead and say it's company, right? I'll put that in there, evaluate. We'll go into layout mode. I'm just doing it through the manual, through the keyboard commands. Get rid of some of these panes here. Oops, and let's undo that. I didn't want that to move, and then we'll lock it so that doesn't happen anymore. Now I can select what I want. So I'll duplicate that with the keyboard command. Whoops. And you can still duplicate a locked object, so let's undo that. I'm going to shift click on this and then duplicate it. Now I've got what I really want. And I got it lined up with those uh, guides, which are great. We'll say last name mod. That looks good. Change these two fields. Okay, so we've got all that information on there, and watch what happens when I do it. It's not doing what we want yet. What it's going to do is evaluate what's inside of here. So I'm going to put in 1 plus 1. And it's got a timestamp, so that's probably not the best uh, thing to see here. But it actually did 1 plus 1 here. But let's, let's make sure it's really clear here. Actually, let's do it this way. We'll just make it clear. So we'll put get current date. Now I'm putting in current date because it's going to put 12 a.m. as the time here. You see it put in the date and so it actually evaluated what was in there. If I put in, you know, so if it had a text result we would have would have gotten 1 plus 1, it would have put a 2 in there. So that's what the evaluate function is for. It's not for really uh, anything the way we're going to use it right now. Because we're going to use it just for its optional parameter. There's an op optional parameter you don't have to enter in there. Which we're going to put in name last. That's going to say, that's going to put this field in there so it's a trigger. It says anytime this field gets modified, do what's in the first parameter here, which we're going to say get current timestamp. 
Now, when we're leaving here, notice I'm not unchecking this. We don't have to do this. In this case, uncheck this option. It won't blank it out. So, evaluate get current timestamp. Well, let's try it out. Put database pros in there again. And let's see what we got here. Oh, we've got to modify this field. I'm sorry. <laughs> Modifying the wrong field here. There we go. And it looks like it's working pretty well. I'm not sure. Did I get the fields? I always like to leave my mistakes here. Name last stamp modify, count modify. Did I I must have done something wrong because it shouldn't have worked here. Let's see what happened here. Did I change the wrong formula? Get current time stand value name last. Ah, uh, maybe does need this unchecked. I might have been wrong about that. Let's see what happens. Go into browse mode. And oops, and you know what I did is I forgot I changed the wrong field. You know, kind of a, a brain uh, fart there. So you see it puts a question mark in there. That's not good. Why did it do that? And it had nothing to do with unchecking this option, so we're going to put it back on. Don't need that unchecked or not. What it is that it's when you put a field in here, it's evaluating it as text. It knows that a field contains text. But this is going, oh, I don't know how to evaluate that. So what you normally do is put quotes around it. That's it. Simply do that and it's going to work now. Come in here, change my last name. You see it puts that in there perfectly. Take the whole thing out. It still works. We don't have to have that option checked off. And I normally do it this way. I don't usually put quotes around it. I like to put the quote function around it. I think it makes more sense. It's easier to read. Um, especially when you're doing other kinds of more advanced operations, you don't have to escape that quote. This works a lot better. It's the same exact thing. That quote function just put quotes around it. And you'll see it functions exactly the same and does that stuff. So we'll come in here and complete that for the other one, the account name. And we'll come over here to that one. I'll copy this. Come into our account paste, oops, select all and then paste, and then change that to account name. There we go. That should do it. Same thing based on last name. And it should still work, but it's always a good idea to test it. In fact, we could, if we, I can't get in there, but you know, as long as it doesn't put a question mark in there and it puts what we want, then you know it's working. So again, just to reiterate, this is really good if you want to track a couple of fields. If you want to do more, you're going to want to go on further with these this video series and see the other methods. But I always keep this in my pocket because I always ask my clients, hey, how many fields do you want to track? Oh, we only need a couple. Well, then we do this. We don't need to charge my clients a ton of money to do something, uh, you know, a full-fledged audit logging system. So just be wary of, of this isn't just simple and easy to use. And for beginners, it's also a tool that you might want to use in situations where you don't need something complicated.